Well, everybody got the bottle filled up. Had a few leaks, had to seal some stuff up. They say they don't recommend the pipe tape, but uh, I just put it up top and that helped it seal. We had some leaks and we were messing with that. It took us a little longer than expected. So it is right now. It's not, it's not early. No. It's dark out. So it's 613. It is Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday. I'm leaving for Florida for Cletus and cars. So pretty much up to tonight. So I got to pack, get ready tomorrow to get this thing on the dinos. We're going to run it over there real quick. Try to slap it on, make it hopefully a motor pull, and then two nitrous pulls, pull it off there, just make sure everything clicks, works, makes more power than it did. Uh, hopefully we can call it good at that point for the trip. Hopefully, and then I guess down there, um, the it does have like an AFR target, so you know, tell it 12 over or whatever and let Holly take the wheel on some of the nitrous. Like I said, so this is the kit, we have 100 jets in it. This is the one on the button with 50 jets, but the ECU won't know when that one comes on. So uh, you'd hope that the, the learn would take care of that. But this one, I am going to set up on a hundred shot, probably 30 or 40% uh, or pound per hour of fuel, about 33%. I think if I remember right, comes out to right around hundred, but we'll look at that when we get over there. We got to get this thing loaded up and it's dark. So we get to load up in the dark. Oh yeah. It's Always a good a whole time. A lot of fun. Yay. And it's windy and cold in Colorado. Weather sucks. All right. See you guys over there. No warmer outside, so uh, actually gonna have April bring me a heating pad and a towel to help warm up the bottle. So <laughs> we'll get this thing loaded up while she heads this way, and uh, then we can make some pulls on this thing. That bottle heater, huh? Got you. <laughs> Look at that! Ooh, little heating pad, a um, towel, I guess. So letting just taking the chill out of the bottle it's only like 40 degrees outside if that uh so trying to at least get the bottle up to room temperature when i was on race week the bottle's probably you know 75 80 degrees and then it made right around 900 to 1000 psi of pressure uh so we're going to go ahead and let that thing warm up just a little bit make a motor pull in this thing see what it does again on motor get another baseline updates with the you know computer and smoothing and all that stuff so i yeah guessing probably 380 to 400 uh tune is similar and gonna go ahead and do that and then we will put the bottle to it Here's what it made, 348 and 361. Uh, not a lot's changed. I mean, this is the burnout tune, not trying to go for every ounce of every power. I want to say similar tune-up last time we were on the dyno. It made around like 370 on that same tune-up. So we're at 350, so maybe 20 off. Again, the box has been updated. I think it's got some adjustments, uh, so it doesn't give quite such high read readings and stuff like that. But... Um, I mean, we'll take it. Also, this is a ramp run, and on the other ones, we were doing gear roll-ons. I'm not sure how much that affects horsepower readings and stuff like that. Uh, but we got a good baseline, 350, 361. So on a 100 shot, I mean, if this thing will make mid fours, that'd be great. Uh, it still sounds loud as ever. Yep. So uh, check on the temp of the bottle, flip the nitrous on. So let's actually go over that real quick. So might get hung up here 
So the nit here's the nitrous setup that I'm gonna go for. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. So nitrous setup, I just did some research on the internet. Uh, 45 millisecond dry fuel delay since the solenoids are really close to the, uh, the plate. 90% throttle trigger at 3500. So this on the converter was like 3200. So I might actually turn this on more like 3700 just to be safe. Then in the burnout, I'll probably turn that back down. Maybe even 3800. 3800 off at six. Um, stage delay, none. Fixed timing. So I'm gonna come in here. So we are at 23 degrees of timing up top. Uh, so I want to come in. I'm gonna pull two just cuz and then two for every 50. So six degrees total. So that would be 17 degrees of timing. So I think that's pretty conservative. Maybe I'll pull, actually, cause I already have a couple degrees out. I think it made best power on like 26 degrees. So two from there would be, you know, I'm already pretty safe from the burnout. So I'm gonna pull two for every 50. So I'm just gonna pull four out of the 23, uh, which would make it what, 18. So 19, so the preset is 18. So that's five degrees off. So I'm gonna leave it at 18. We'll leave the preset at 18 and then maybe add a degree back into it. But it's for burnouts, it doesn't need to be super aggressive. And then 33 pound per hour. So kind of what you can do here is let me grab my calculator and I'll show you. So the truck went ahead and made 350 horsepower. So I'm gonna go ahead and go 350 times 33% is 115 horsepower. So we have 150, we have 100 horsepower jets in it, so 33% of that. So I think that's gonna get us pretty close. It's 30% more fuel for 33% more power. So that's gonna put us really close right there, maybe even just a hair extra. And then the Holly goes to a target. So normally I'm at like 12.3 on air fuel for a burnout. I'm gonna go ahead and let it drop it to 12.0. It's not a huge difference here, uh, but I wanna keep everything safe, keep plenty of fuel in it. And I'd rather be on the rich side right now and then maybe lean it out. So we'll see uh, how this first pool goes. Hopefully everything goes smooth. And then we'll go from there. I don't want to put too much to it. We don't have a ton of bottle anyway. Um, so just, just try to make a couple, maybe one or two nitrous pools. Verify everything is ready to go, ready to rip in a burnout. And then we'll go from there. screwed up and forgot to hit the data log so i don't know it came on and then it came off and then it came back on so it's kind of weird it did pick up 100 horsepower on that so that's perfect uh hopefully i can look at my fuel and uh see what it was telling me if it was i bet it hit the leaner rich cut possibly um i mean actually fueling was right on so it doesn't even look like it was wanting much so i don't know why it like came on then cut off then came on that's kind of kind of weird uh i'll have to look at my safeties and see where i'm at but otherwise it was pretty decent i just wish i would have got a data log so probably have to make one more pull uh and then we'll we'll try that uh, again i mean everything seemed okay i think so maybe try it one more time not an ideal pull but as you guys see fueling was right on the money so i think all that looks good i'm just not sure quite why um why it turned itself off oh you know what, it might have been, it, it'll only spray for 10 seconds, but it wasn't in for 10 seconds. So, uh, lean rich, I'm gonna, maybe I'll turn these off and I'll, I'll try to watch better. Uh, everything looked okay, but, I don't know. Figure something out here. Give it another try, data log, data log's your friend. 
I, I screwed up there. So, try this again. Alrighty, so let's look at what this little 4.8 did. Manifold air temp 92. I know bottle pressure a little cool. Uh, came right in. The AFRs were a little lean, but let's see where the bottle kicks in, which is right right here at 4,000. The bottle comes in, and uh, that initial hit on the bottle, it goes from like 12.6. It's a little fat. It actually goes 12.6 to 11.8, and then it starts carrying itself back out. Uh, so I could probably pull down on the fuel just a little bit on the initial hit or change the delay possibly. So let's see what the compensation is out through here. So I mean the comp is only within I guess 10% right there. It's wanting to add. So actually it looks like the bottle's probably good. I could add a little actually on the fuel. So make that 33 like 38 maybe. And then over here I can turn up the delay so it doesn't go rich so quick. So, I mean, it's coming in, it's loaded, it starts making a pull, 12.5, 12.4, and then the bottle comes in and it goes to like 12, so right there, and then it drops clear down to like 11.3, 11.4, and then it starts coming back and leaning itself out. So yeah, looks pretty good though, really. That whole pull was really good, so I'm not sure what was with the first one. Um, I mean, I'm looking at like a 13 right here and, um, you know, 12, maybe it had air in the lines on that first hit. Uh, and then, it, so it kind of came on, fell off, changed the tune up and then, you know, I'm not sure how the safeties work. If usually when they hit a safety, it completely kills it and then comes back on. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, everything looks super well and everything's going to change some in a burnout cause it's going to have a whole different load against it. And I'm going to turn the bottle on sooner, uh, a little earlier. So, I mean, I honestly, I could throw timing at it. I could lean it out. I could try to make maximum power, but I just want it to be safe and good in the burnout. And that right there is another 100 horsepower right in that area where I want it to try to push past uh, and get into high gear. So, I honestly think we're, that's perfect. I don't even, I don't want to sit here and beat on it and break it before driving, you know, 28 hours to Florida for this burnout comp. So, uh, I'll full send it down there maybe even grab the other button. I don't care what happens to it as long as I'm in the burnout box at Cletus and Cars uh, sending this thing in front of a big crowd. Don't care what happens at that point, but I don't want to break it on the dyno and not be able to make that happen. So, Otherwise, man, not not a bad deal. Uh -huh. Pretty it smooth. It should be doing pretty good for what it's got to it now. Yeah, I mean, there will be a lot to, lot to still play with, but I mean, what a simple deal. Throw it in there. I know the bottle, it'll probably pick up quite a bit of power. Like the bottle's cold to the touch and it should be fairly warm to the touch so if i get a good full bottle you know 911 900 to 1100 psi of bottle pressure that thing's easily going to pick up another 30 horsepower so it'd probably make about 110 extra on the bottle which up here at elevation makes sense this is also when the truck goes down it'll make better power at elevation and then the bottle on top of it so uh leave it nice and safe here take it down there and see what this thing will do might as well huh yeah, send it. <laughs> send it, bud. All right, guys. Uh, we're going to get this thing unloaded real quick. So the bottle heater didn't end up doing very much. Bottle's still cold, but it uh, was worth the try to gain something there. Check this out, though. This is pretty cool. So get it clear for you guys. The first run was 348, and on the bottle, it made 442. So it made 96 horsepower on a 100 shot with a cold bottle. So that's pretty dang efficient. Where are you going? Super dang efficient. Super dang. Super dang. Ready to kill some more tires, Bernie is, huh? Heck yeah, always. All right, so I think we're good. 
I just thought that was pretty cool that, I mean, literally right there at pretty much 100 horsepower. I still got 50 on the button and I got a whole bag of jets if we need more, but I think that's the perfect place to start right now. All right, guys, we're gonna load that thing up and we'll see you guys in Florida. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because you don't wanna miss the videos that are about to come.